Let's talk about the lack of fit test. So um, how can you measure lack of linear fit? This is sort of that, that first assumption, the L assumption. Um, let's take into account a couple of different cases. Let's let's say let's say we have um, you know uh, some data points that uh, kind of situate themselves like like this, and um, okay. We'll talk about this lack of fit test. It's going to be required that we we fix uh, some number of distinct x values. Okay, in this case, I've got uh, c equals four. Okay, I've got one, two, three, four x values. Okay, I could label them like this: x three, x four. Okay. Now it turns out I can partition the sum of squared errors or the error sum of squares as these two quantities, which we'll call the pure error sum of squares and the lack of fit sum of squares. Okay, these are the formulas for them down here. Let's see if we can make these things pop a little bit. See if we can make them make sense. Um, SSPE. Look at what it's measuring. Um, so first of all, yij is the jth observation at the ith x value, okay, and, I'm, and then yi bar is the, the, the sample mean there at the ith x value, okay. So for example, um, SSPE, so this is, you know, maybe this, this right here is uh, clearly that's uh, uh, y1 bar, and then this value here, this is y2 bar, it's the Sample mean of the responses at that x value y3 bar, so maybe here, and then maybe here is y4 bar. Okay, so SSPE is, is the sum of squares of all these values off of their means. Okay, here's another one, here's another one there, and then here's another one there. Okay, so it's adding up all of those areas, errors. Huh. Okay, all right of their means, okay? And um, so these all have the same shape essentially because I've got four points at each one and I've sort of made them all symmetrical so it's easy to draw, easy to draw, easy to do. That's what we want, right? Okay. You add those up. All this this area here in the, in the green, if you sum up those squared errors, that is my pure error sum of squares, okay? Now, what is this SSLF, this SS, uh, this lack of fit sum of squares? It's, uh, look at each one of these things. You're measuring the, the difference between the, the, the fits and the, the, these conditional means on, you know, wherever your, your, which X value you are. If, for example, if you're the first X value, um, here's, uh, here's Y, one bar. Remember, this is y one bar, right, right in here. Um, and I want to measure the distance off the best fitting line. Where's the best fitting line through these, the, this data grouping? Remember, these are my original points. All these black dots. Okay, Pro maybe the best fitting line to all this mess runs, you know, something like runs through something like that. Okay, so let's take. Uh, uh, formula says to, to measure the difference between these means and the, the hat values. Now, of course, um, the hat values for, for the, the, these are the estimated responses based on the regression line for the, you know, the, the, the jth value for the ith, um, ith uh, x value jth response for the ith x value. These are all going to be the same um, for, you know, when x is set here. So I've actually got four of these, four of these squares added up. And then similarly, I'll take the difference here off there. Okay, so I'm sort of, all right, I'm adding up four of those, adding up four of these. And finally, this much right in there, right? Whoops, four of those. Okay, when I sum up those 16 squares, that gives me the lack of fit sum of squares. And again, you can kind of see this this partitioning is it, it, of of sums of squares just keeps on popping up, and it's it's really 
pretty fantastic uh, the way this works out. Um, uh, you can sort of measure the overall sum of squared errors, which again is you know the sums of all these errors, uh, all these residuals, these uh, uh, off of the the prediction line. I add up all of those big sums of squares, which you don't see in here, but but remember they would look like uh, you know this. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. That that total sum of squares can be expressed as this sum of squares where they deviate off of their their, their sort of local averages plus how the local averages deviate off of the model. Okay, it it, it makes perfect sense, but it's sort of uh, you know it certainly would have to uh, uh, need some proving there. Okay, so. Um, so it turns out that the sum of the, of the green areas and the sum of the red areas uh, uh, comes out to be the, the error sum of squares. Um, how does this look if you have a nice linear relationship, however? You know, what if you had something like, like this? Um, in this case, okay. And now maybe you're your regression line runs, you know, right, say, straight through there. Um, just about, in this case, your, uh, so, in this case, my, uh, my local means there are real close to the, to the regression line, right? So, if, now if I uh, subtract these, if I take these areas off the local means there, you get these guys like so, going off the local means, not the line there, going off the local means. Like so. Do to do to do. Uh, off of there, right? Sum that up. Oops, that goes to there, I think. And then to there, and then from the local mean to the point, right? Local mean to the point, local mean to the point, local in between here and there, right? And add all those up. So this is SSPE again. Now look, this SSPE and this SSPE are, are they should be the same. Uh, if you'll note, what I've sort of attempted to show here is I've, I've taken the same groupings and I've just sort of moved them around so that they sort of cluster around the line. So the, the area in the green stuff here should be, I'm, tr it's, I'm trying to make it look like it's the same as the, the area in the green stuff over here. But now, look at what happens to the SSLF, the SS uh, lack of fit, the, sum, the lack of fit sum of squares. If I go to the Go to the the local mean here, the mean of, of this response for the of these responses. How far is it from the regression line? It's like very little, if anything. And I've got four of those tiny little squares to add up. This one is this far away. I've got four of those tiny squares to add up. This one is this far away. I've got four of those tiny squares to add up. And this one is this far away. And I've got four of those tiny little squares to add up. So. If I add up these 16 squares, that gets me the total uh, lack of fit sum of squares. Okay. Now you can see uh, the, the contrast between these two. The SSPE, the, the pure error sum of squares in this case, is the same as in this case. Um, the SSLF has has virtually vanished in this case. Where over here, it's it's very far away. Why is that? Because the these local means are situated far from the regression line model, indicating a lack of linear fit. Okay, if they, if these, if the regression line model is a good model for those local means, then um, then then you should see that lack of fit sum of squares uh, getting very close to zero. Okay, and then as this disappears, the SSPE becomes closer and closer to the error sum of squares SSE. Okay. So that's the basis for the lack of fit test, <clears throat> and essentially, uh, here's a here's a lack of fit uh, sum of squares or table. It's a uh, I guess it's a 
uh, this is sum of squares table, um, just like we've we've seen before with our regression sum of squares and our residual sum of squares or error sum of squares. Um, right, this is uh, this is our uh, this is SSE, and this is uh, SSR. I think is our and this one is SSTO. Well, sorry, this is SSTO. This is uh, SSR. And, uh, oops, this, this is a typo. This is a big fat mess. Okay. And here should be J equals one to N. Uh, sorry. And sub I, this is SSE. Okay. Um, sorry for the mess. Um, the two new rows here are this lack of fit and this pure error stuff. These two sums of squares sum up to this SSE. That is all of this stuff right in here plus all of this stuff right in here gives you all of this stuff right in here. And all of this stuff right here plus all of this stuff right here gives you all of this stuff down here. That's how that works. Now, um, if uh, if the if there is no lack of fit, if the if the if you do have a good linear model, then it turns out that uh, um, this stuff over this stuff, uh, this this stuff, this MSLF and this MSPE, that these are just these sums of squares divided by their degrees of freedom. Okay, uh, if I take that if I take that over that. This stuff behaves like an f random like an f random variable with c minus two degrees of freedom in the numerator and n minus c degrees of freedom in the denominator. The c, remember by the way, is the number of x values, the number of distinct x values you have. So, like in our example, we had um, where is it? There we go. One, two, three, four. We happen we just happen to have four observations at each one, but these are the four distinct x values. The expected value of this uh, mean uh, square uh, due to lack of fit is all this stuff. It's sigma squared plus a bunch of stuff here. The expected value of, of the pure error sum of squares is sigma squared. Now look at what happens to all of this stuff here. If, um, if the null hypothesis is in fact true, that is that there is a linear relationship between um, the two variables x and y, then, then this mean really should be equal to beta naught plus beta one um, times x for each one of those i values. And so, in fact, all of this stuff under the null hypothesis, this stuff equals ui uh, given, you know, h naught is true. So then, then you have zero here. All of this stuff goes to zero. And, um, okay, so on, on average, then this stuff is also equal to the variance if the uh, the common variance of the of the error term. So, so if the null hypothesis is true, you'd sort of expect all of this this MSLF stuff to be close to MSPE, and so that this fraction should hover around one. If it gets to be really really large, um, and that's the way it would go, uh, because right because. These terms are squared, n is positive, this is positive. You're adding up a bunch of positive things here. If this quantity gets too big, then it's sort of indicating that there's a lack of fit. There's a lack of fit. And so that's what the lack of fit test does. And we'll implement this in R in the next video.